Hey guys, so in this video, I'm gonna be taking a look at the 48 volt Vatver golf cart battery. And they actually sent me the kit. So it, it comes with this charger too. So it's a 20 amp charger. It comes with the battery, also comes with a screen. It's actually a pretty cool looking screen. I can show you guys in a little bit. So like I said, this is a 48 volt battery. It is lithium iron phosphate chemistry. And I think there are 105 amp hour cells in here. So the max continuous charging current for this battery is 50 amps. And since pretty much everybody is gonna be using that included 20 amp charger, that should work just fine. So the continuous discharge current in this battery is 100 amps, but it surges up to 200 amps. And that's because, again, it's a golf cart battery. So it needs to have that extra little oomph to get you up the hills and stuff like that in the cart. And I've already reviewed one of Vatver's 12 volt batteries. So the larger, I think it was a 460 amp hour battery. And that was built really well. I've also seen reviews on this battery and the inside looked really nice. So I'm gonna be popping that apart in just a minute. I'll also do the standard, so capacity test, stuff like that. And I can show you the app. Vatver now has an app for these batteries. They use a JBD BMS, like I mentioned in my other video on the other battery. But you can use the Overkill app as well, or there was another app that they recommended before, which I won't even try to pronounce the name of that app. But yeah, now they have their own app. So Vetra has their own specific app for their batteries. So I'll show you guys up close here on where all the connections are, and then we can pop it apart and see what it looks like inside. So there's not much to look at on the outside of the battery. The top has these handles here, some recycling details and warnings. And then here is where all the connections are. So all the other sides are basically slick, but here's where the connections are here. There is a positive and negative terminal, obviously. And then there's an on off switch for the BMS. And then this is where your Bluetooth module is. This RS45 is for the screen um, that I'm gonna attach here in a little bit. And then they have a vent. Yeah, so quite honestly, this is one of the nicest battery builds I've seen. And I really, really think that this is the way most manufacturers are gonna end up moving with these custom made like mats. It's not even a board really. It's a mat essentially where all the leads are contained within that fabric or this plastic sheathing here. And then they go straight to the BMS. There's no tangled leads. There's not even a need for any kind of wire protectors because there's no wire here. It's all within this. And you can see here, they've actually got their name on this. Yeah, so the one thing I'm thinking is the vents. So if there was ever a pressure issue with the cells, I don't know how, I guess because this is sort of a fabric, maybe it's still got room to be able to expand and pop if it needed to. But yeah, see these are the terminals and they're actually still laser welded. All the bus bars are still there. But yeah, these this mat contains all the wires in it. And I don't know if I pointed, I don't think I pointed it out already, but this is a rubber liner all the way around the exterior of it. This is probably the easiest battery I've ever gotten into before. It's essentially like taking open a 48 volt rack battery. There's nothing on the top of this battery because the terminals are meant to be on the side for the golf cart. So very simple to get into for sure. Keep in mind though, the other build they had, so the 460 amp hour 12 volt battery that I took a look at, Everything was really managed well with their wiring, but this just does seem like a cleaner way to go. I mean, in the future, that may end up being what people do. I see one of the temperature sensors right here. So they even have those incorporated into this. That's just crazy. And every bus bar they have in this battery has insulation on it. So they've got them in a couple different places. BMS has plenty of space. So it's not crammed in here. There's actually a gap back here behind. But there is no actual wire conductors coming off of these cells to the positive and the negative. Everything is a bus bar, a specifically designed bus bar. Very cool. So yep, they just got an insulated bus bar on the positive and one on the negative over here. They've got a little slots here on the bus bar, so they've got a little bit of play if they needed to, but everything is custom designed, it looks like. And yeah, I'm not gonna break absolutely everything apart here. Anytime you can have custom bus bars like this and skip having wire conductors, it's just gonna make things more efficient. Really neat. 
So this is what the battery is going to be going into, a uh, club car, 48 volt model. Unfortunately, this is not my golf cart. It's a friend of mine. But yes, yeah, so you can see there he had Trojan batteries in. They're in rotten shape at this point, and there's a lot of corrosion on the terminals. And it's definitely going to be an upgrade for sure, and a lot lighter. I'll be letting him mount the screen and the charger permanently later on, depending on where he wants to put them. All right, I hooked the charge verter up. This 20 amp charger does seem like a nice charger here, this waterproof one they send with it. But I want to quicken things up because I want to do a discharge test on the battery. So I hooked the charge verter up and it's ramping up slow. So we should get there pretty soon. And this shouldn't take too long to charge that. Because right now we're at 48%. Looks like we're done. I heard the battery actually click and charging stopped. So now on to the next part of the adventure. So in order to do the capacity test, I actually used the 12,000 XP and I hooked it to a Victron shunt and it was fairly easy. I just had to put the 12,000 XP on lead acid mode because there's no communication obviously with this battery and the inverter. And then I disconnected the wall mount battery and the other two batteries, of course. So it's just, it was just gonna be the that were battery discharging. And not surprisingly, it passed without an issue. So we got 107 amp hours from it. It was actually still discharging just a smidge more when I took that screenshot, but essentially, yeah, 107, 108 amp hours on this battery. So yeah, it passed without a problem. So I'm gonna assume this is basically just a drop-in replacement. So obviously I'm not gonna need these wire leads going in between the batteries to create that 48 volts but I will need the main positive and main negative there. So I think I'm gonna put the battery on this side with the terminals facing that way, of course. This might be the hardest part of the process, or at least I hope it's the hardest part of the process here. These things are heavy, and imagine there's six of them. So the golf cart's gonna be definitely be a lot lighter once I put this new battery in. I'm just about to go around and get the other ones out of the other side, but I'm wondering, like, the width here is good, but this little bump out they have to keep the batteries in place seems like I'm going to be halfway sitting on top of that. So, I don't know. Might be best just to bring the battery over. Because I think what it's going to do is come to about right there. So if this weren't here, it would be perfect. Because the, the width of it is almost exactly from here to here. Yeah, I'll just have to see. So yeah, I'm just shy of being able to fit in. I'm actually, what I'm gonna do is cut these two little spacers that were used to keep the lead acid batteries in place. I'm gonna cut these out and with this cut tool here and safety first. So I'm going to squint as I cut so I don't get anything in my eyes. <laughs> All right, so I could have spaced this off. So I could have spaced it up with some wood, a two by four or something like that. And I still would have had room for the seat here, but that only took a second. And those weren't doing anything for me now anyway. So just cutting them off, making it clean so that I can put the battery right in there. It should be pretty tight. It's gonna be going all the way right up to here. So we'll check and see what it looks like. Nice. Woo! Wow, that is snug. Wow, cool. So he's not, I mean, it's not going to take much to keep this in place. Of course, it's heavy as can be too, but it's fitting right against the plastic on this side. You guys can probably see the flange goes underneath this plastic here. That's why it took me a little bit to get it in. And then we are pinched in both sides here. So it fits like a glove. Still feels like I could be missing something because this was just so easy. But yeah, I, these wires could be tidied up a bit. I'm gonna have a lot of extra space in here now. That's funny, I was forgetting something. I Right before I closed things back up, I remembered this. So this is the new charger connection. Yeah, this is it right here. So all I have to do is put these two 
ring terminals on and they are labeled. So positive is brown, negative is blue. Actually, this gives me an opportunity to pick it at least one thing since everything else they have so far has just been great for this install. But yeah, I just don't like just bare copper here. Uh, this is gonna be exposed to the weather. So they should have this tinned, I would think, but it is not. So yeah, there is a possibility of this corroding eventually. Um, you are gonna have, most people are gonna have their golf cart indoors, under roof somewhere. It would be a good idea though for these connections for the charger. Okay, so the battery is nearly dead from the capacity test I did. I just charged it just a few minutes. So I'm just gonna turn this on and, but look here, that fits so nice, that is so cool. Yeah, I'm gonna turn this on and if I don't hear any popping or hissing or whatever, I think we're good to go. And I'll at least back it up and go forward to see if any, everything works. I can check the app and see what, how much juice is in this battery, but it should be near nothing. I'll put it on the screen for you guys. And yeah, it's basically, basically dead at this point. So it's only got 4% uh, state of charge. But as you can see here, I didn't scroll down before in the app, but you guys can see the individual cell voltages and everything on this app. So yeah, it's pretty cool. All right, so I just dropped the charger in here. Plenty of room for it. And at 20 amps, it shouldn't take too long to charge it up enough to be able to use it up and down the driveway to test it. And yeah, as far as the screen, if I didn't edit this part out already, I did show you guys the screen, but I would plug it in right here and go down through the bottom of here and then just route it up to the front of the golf cart. You could either put it on the left here or over in the center over there, but there's plenty of space for the screen. So this charger is waterproof. So he'll probably end up just mounting it right in here or in there, screwing it to the side here probably. But I'll let him decide where he wants to put that. And look what I forgot. So I'm forgetting multiple things, but yeah, they put they give you these covers too. So you can put it over the terminals. And I would have to take these off to do that. I'm not gonna do that right now because I'm ready to start driving this thing. Grab the camera. This is super fun. I need one of these. All right, I'm gonna start it out on a hill going up to the house. But I've been looking at the screen here and it hasn't gone over, it's like 52 amps or something, just starting out. So let's take a look here, starting off. Some kind of goose up there. It's always some kind of wildlife when I'm trying to record. So guys, like I mentioned before, it's gonna be hard to beat the quality of this battery. Price-wise though, for solar storage, this wouldn't be practical, plus the fact that the charging is limited to 50 amps continuous. But for a golf cart, it would be hard to beat. The one thing that it lacks is heaters, so internal heaters for the battery. I don't know how many people are going to be driving a golf cart in the dead of winter, but <laughs> this, this does not have heaters. So depending on how they have the BMS set up, it still should be able to discharge down to zero degrees. 
but it won't charge unless you're above 32 degrees Fahrenheit. This really does highlight the fact that I need one of these golf carts. I need to buy one. It'll help with reviewing different brand golf cart batteries, but also it is super fun to zip around in them. And yeah, it's not just the quality of the battery itself, but the whole kit. They did a good job with the entire thing. Whether it's the little items I pointed out before or the fact that they ins included multiple different sizes of bolts to go on the terminal there, just in case you had a lot of different lugs on there. Yeah, it seems like they thought of pretty much everything. It's essentially just a drop-in for the lead acid, which was what I was hoping. But yeah, you can always hope, but you never really know until you get into it. And if someone didn't have to do all the different testing that I did, it would really just take a couple minutes to swap out the old batteries for the new, depending on the design of your golf cart, I guess. They also have a thin model, so that wouldn't have worked good for me because it's a little bit taller. The cells are taller, so it would end up hitting the seat. But yeah, they have a thinner model just in case your compartment is a little bit more narrow than mine was. And of course, the golf cart market is going to be a lot smaller than the solar market. But yeah, I would keep this in mind if you guys are considering getting a lithium upgrade for your golf cart. I guess considering the mileage you can get out of one charge here, they're not really going to be charging it very often. All right, guys, so I don't want to make the video too long. I appreciate you guys watching. I will put a link in the description below to this battery. And feel free to comment if you've already done a swap or you're considering doing one. If you guys have swapped out for a different brand name even, I'd like to hear from you. I was just happy he had a 48 volt battery. I know there's some that, uh, I think they do carry a 36 volt option for Vatra also, but yeah, those are a little bit oddball. I like the 48 volts. All right guys, well, thanks for watching. Stay tuned.